Hi, I'm Gayla Scrivener, ex-corporate girl and now work-from-anywhere adventure seeker. Creating a work-from-anywhere lifestyle isn't without its challenges, but those challenges certainly don't overshadow all the many benefits. What breaks my heart is seeing folks stuck and unhappy in a career and lifestyle when they want more out of life. I believe that we all have the opportunity to create the life of our dreams and earn a living in fun and creative ways to make our dream lifestyle a reality. You too can experience wonderful adventure and freedom as you live life on your own terms. In this weekly podcast, I share experiences when it comes to growing a lifestyle business through guest interviews, content marketing experience and perspectives, virtual leadership lessons, and I'll even throw in some travel adventures. My hope is through all the interviews, the tips, advice, and personal experience, you'll be inspired and motivated to keep going and creating your dream lifestyle. Life's an adventure. There's no time but the present to live life to the fullest. Hi there, and welcome to today's show. Have you ever felt a little reluctant when it comes to networking? Well, I know I have. As an introvert, I think it's daunting to go out and do the whole networking thing. It feels awkward and sometimes forced. My guest today, Greg Peters, totally understands. He's a computer programmer by training. Well, Greg was the original reluctant networker. Through study and practice and lots and lots of trial and error, he has been able to transform himself into a true networking professional using the skills he learned to build a thriving web development business. Well, now as the co-founder of Third Generation Networking, Greg coaches individuals, trains staff, and presents to associations and other groups on how to get past their reluctance and start building better connections and stronger networks. Greg is the past chapter president of the National Speakers Association, the author of Hello and a Handshake, a Reluctant Networker's Guide to Survival and Success at Your Next Business Gathering, and the co-host of the Third Generation Networking Podcast. Well, I'm glad you're here with me today for this conversation with Greg Peters, the reluctant networker. Networking successfully is so important when it comes to building a business or just navigating through life, really. I know ultimately, deep down, I just know that networking is just about making new friends. But why does it seem so hard sometimes? Now, whether you have an online business or not, networking the right way and making those quality connections is super beneficial. Sometimes it takes getting out of your comfort zone and it definitely means not always being in sell mode. I've learned a whole lot about networking over the past several years and I'm still learning. That's why I'm glad to have you meet Greg. So let's get right to it, shall we? Well, hey, Greg, I am so glad that you're here with me today. Gila, I, it is an absolute pleasure to come and visit you virtually. I have gotten to know you through a client uh, that became a friend of mine. And one of our my first tasks that I did for her was actually edit a podcast that she had interviewed you for. And that's how you entered my world. I don't know, a few years ago, two, maybe three years ago. Since that time, I've done some little bit of internet stalking on you. I followed you here and there. And this is the first time that we've actually got to talk. So this is really cool for me. Tell my listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, I actually started my professional life as a computer programmer with all the social skills that that implies. Um, <laughs> I kind of grew beyond that. I decided to start my own business as a web developer back when that was brand new and mm -hmm. uh, rapidly discovered having no social skills didn't help in that area. And so I had to learn how to do some networking in order to build the business. And that went pretty well until I decided to go full time on the business in 2007. And about two years after that, I decided, you know what, this is not making me happy anymore. And so I was complaining about that to a friend of mine and she said, well, did you ever think to teach people about how you grew your business? And that was the moment that my company, The Reluctant Networker, was born. <laughs> so I have been teaching people about connecting with each other pretty much ever since. 
Um, and only recently, my mom and I actually combined our businesses. She also teaches about networking. And now we are third generation networking. Which, by the way, that you have third generation networking podcast. I've been listening to that and I've really enjoyed it. What's What prompted you two to start your podcast? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, we've always believed in in content marketing. You know, if we put put what we know out there, if we're helping people, we just figure that they'll draw people to us naturally. And uh, so we'd always been blogging and, and, and doing things like that. And we decided, hey, let's give this podcast thing a try. Uh, so we started out just, you know, I was sort of interviewing my mom as the expert. And that was always a lot of fun. And uh, about probably four months ago now, we decided to start interviewing people. That has been just a blast uh, to learn how to do that. I mean, you've had experience, obviously a lot of experience with this. It's, it's slightly different when you are interviewing someone beyond yourself uh, about how to, how to do different things that they might be skillful at. And it's just a wonderful way to connect with people. Well, I just enjoy it so much. I love that you're the reluctant networker and yes. your mom is the networking guru. Yes, she is. Quite, quite the contrast. Can you tell me a, a little bit about that? Well, uh, you know, the, the reluctant networker, that was uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, it did come from being a computer programmer. I, I had no clue how to be a networker. I actually, when I first started my business, I took my mom's class in how to network uh, and asked me if she gave me a family discount. <laughs> Well, what, did she give you a break? No, <laughs> I had to pay full <laughs> price. <laughs> but uh, I learned from that. And now it's people joke and they say, well, you don't seem particularly reluctant. And I said, well, I, that's who I was and who I help. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, my mom, on the other hand, she has been in sales for a good portion of her adult life. She used to work for a paychecks company. And now she, she decided to become her own training program about networking. And so that's kind of how she's always been seen. She actually did not pick out the name for herself. It was one of her students that went through the class that said, you know, Debbie, you are the networking guru. And she kind of took that up. And uh, she even has a license plate now that's uh, on her car about networking gurus. <laughs> oh, how cute. I love it. At first, I mean, what, what was your biggest obstacle when growing your business? Oh, gosh, uh, it was it was very much not understanding the importance of developing relationships. Uh, I would go to networking events and I would talk with people with and only listen with the part of my brain that was, can this person buy from me? And if they couldn't buy from me, then there was no reason for me to talk to them. I would go out to coffees with people. And my only thought was, can they buy from me? And I think this really damaged my reputation because people, you know, people know when all you're doing is looking at them as a prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, so it took me a while to really understand that the importance of developing relationships over time. Uh, you know, I, I actually made a graph one time. I, I told you I'm a systems guy. <laughs> yep. I mean, I made a graph one time of all the, the different projects I've worked on in my, my current business and where they came from. And the funny thing was in the center of this was the Ann Arbor chamber uh, that I was a member of at that time, but I never once got business from someone that I met during a, you know, a networking event and only one or two of them actually eventually bought from me. It was always someone that they introduced me to. And it was that relationship development that I finally understood that that was the important part of this networking thing was to, to build the resources I needed to be successful. Yes. So being a part of a group does not necessarily translate into a one-to-one -one type of transaction. Is that what no. you're saying? No. Yeah. That's, that's uh, in fact, that's a, it's a mindset that I try to help my clients work with is that that transactional mindset can be really a challenge because there are people who can be helpful to you, but you can't help and vice versa. So, you know, the, the person you're talking to, they might not be able to find you a, a, a client, but they might know someone who is potentially a client. So the thing is you need to develop those relationships without immediate expectation of, of results. You need to be willing to take the time to uh, cultivate those, those connections in order to be successful at it. So when you're first starting out a business, is it your advice to get plugged into a networking group? I would really, yeah, that, that would be a high recommendation uh, for me. But in order to do that successfully, you have to know who your, your target market is. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if you don't know who you, who you serve, then your networking is going to be all over the place. You might join the chamber. That's great. And I highly recommend joining a chamber if that's going to connect you with the results you want. If you're looking for um, international import export firms, the local chamber might not be your best location. So you need to know who you're trying to serve before you can start networking everywhere, because really that's an inefficient use of your time. You want to network in those locations where either you're being connected with your target or you're being connected with those who can connect you. So being selective on what groups that you should network with or get tapped into is important because I could see getting not over networked. I don't think that that's the right word, but you can get worn out by going to a lot of meetings that don't reap the results that you want. Very much so. Uh, if you think about it, you can, you can network somewhere every single day. Uh, you know, there, there's, you know, a lunch, a breakfast, a dinner going on that you could go to in order to network. Uh, but you'll end up sort of skipping. You're, you're just like a rock skipping over the water. You're just touching lightly. No one gets to know you. You're much better off focusing on uh, in, in kind of our rubric is no more than three different groups because you really want to become deeply invested in those groups, become part of that culture so that you're well connected within that community. It's only those who are well connected that are going to see the results that they want. Is there a time that you might outgrow a group or it's just not working? Yes, it, you definitely can. You might discover that the group has changed directions. Perhaps a leadership has decided to move in a different direction and it's not no longer supporting you the way you once might have liked. Uh, you, might have, you might discover that you misunderstood what the group was about when you joined it. And after a year, you're part of it and you realize that this is not going to achieve the goals that you want. Uh, your end goals may have changed. Um, and in, in that case, yeah, you might need to take a look and see what you're, what you're doing and whether or not there's a different group that's going to support you better. Uh, so yeah, there's any number of reasons that could, could cause you to, to grow past it. But my caveat is understand that it can take a while, you know, six months to a year even before you're going to become established enough in a group where you're going to start to reap the benefits. So don't just show up at a group after, and after three months say, oh, I've grown past it because you have not grown into it yet. Well, there's a lot of groups out there that have formal meetings like the chambers or something mm -hmm. like a BNI or, or different type of structured networking groups. And they have meetings at a set interval to be committed. I mean, before joining, you should commit to that. Can you commit to that consistent meeting? And I would think that that would be the first step. <laughs> is Absolutely vital. If you aren't at least showing up, at least showing up to the regular meetings. Yeah, you're, you're, you're dead in the water. I mean, a lot of people, they seem to have this misconception that all they have to do is sign up for their chamber and their phone's going to start ringing off the hook. That's just not the case. It is not going to happen. I'm sorry to have to tell you that, <laughs> but um, you have to, you know, the signing up is like getting your fishing license. If you never throw your hook in the water, then the license does you absolutely no good whatsoever. You have to at least show up to the regular meetings, but I would argue you need to go beyond that. You need to actually be meeting with people whom you met as a part of that group outside of that normally scheduled event in order to be able to create a deeper connection. Uh, I would recommend, especially for some of these larger chambers, look for a committee you can be on because then you really become part of that culture. And it doesn't actually require that you spend a whole lot of extra time, but you become part of a nucleus, a smaller group within the larger group that is much more visible. So through working on a project, let's say through a committee, you get to know somebody even better because oh, yeah. you're working on a separate project because of that relationship and working together that could lead to other business. Oh, definitely. I, in fact, back when I, I, I first joined the Ann Arbor Chamber, I joined their ambassadors, which was sort of the welcoming committee. We, we welcomed new members. And as a result of being on that, and this was back when I was still a web developer, there was a guy on the, on the committee. He was, uh, he was a banker and he was working with a local construction company who needed a website done. And he connected me just because he knew me and liked me from being on the, uh, on the ambassadors group together. Oh, yeah. So 
that's probably the biggest thing to get over is, and I know that that I've had uh, that difficulty, that transactional thought process and feeling like the referrals don't come in fast enough. Yeah, there's a lot that, uh, you know, it's funny, there's a lot of reasons that referrals might not come in. You know, first of all, you're not showing up in the first place. You know, <laughs> if you're not there, then they don't, they don't think about you. Uh, second, you are not making yourself an, an invaluable part of their world. Uh, providing benefits to the people in your network is one way you can stay in contact with them. Uh, but the third one is you're not asking for the referral in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, once you've developed a relationship, why wouldn't you ask for referrals and be very specific about what you need? It's not just, I'm looking for people who want insurance. It's I'm looking to meet Bob Smith, who is the HR director for the ABC company, uh, to talk to him about possibly bringing me in to support his people. I mean, you want to be very specific when you are asking for those referrals. Otherwise, you're not likely to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So it's not too pushy to be asking for referrals? Uh, I would say no, but there is, uh, you know, sort of the, I joke in some of my speaking engagements, I, I talk about, uh, we sort of have this, this mindset that we're either, you know, Oliver, please, sir, may I have some more, or, or we're the godfather, I've, I've given you something, now I expect something in return, you know, there's that, <laughs> you know, that, that, that imposition is, is, is that feeling that we have, but I, I say, uh, go with the Jedi mind trick instead. And, you know, you remember the, the, in the original, the, the original, and now they call it episode four, where, you know, uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi says, these are not the droids you're looking for. And what do they do? Well, oh, these aren't the droids. They mm -hmm. repeat after you. So if you want them to offer to help you, then you offer to help them first. So mm -hmm. I always, when, when I'm working with someone, I'll say, hey, you know, what can I do to help you out? Who do you need to be connected to? And we'll see what we can do to help them out. And guess what they do right after that? They ask if how how mm -hmm. I can help. You know, how can mm -hmm. I be helped? So it's it's really, and you can't do it as a technique because people know when you're techniquing them. You have to be really sincere about wanting to help that other person. Well, through my journey in developing Scrivener Solutions and growing that, starting out face to face networking and then really getting into content marketing, both weigh heavily on building quality relationships for long-term sustainability. Mm -hmm. And that has become like the core of, you know, relationships matter. Do you see a correlation between content marketing and face-to-face -face networking? Is there similarities I, or? I mean, there's definitely some underlying concepts that apply mm -hmm. when you're talking about sort of face-to-face -face networking or just relationship management one of the best ways to stay connected with people to stay in their world is to find ways to be of service mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like, whether you're connecting them with opportunities to pursue the, their passions, whether you're looking for a, an opportunity to get their kids in a great school, whether you're looking to help the, support them in whatever their mission is in life, you are putting your efforts to their service. And in I, th I think personally, I think uh, successful content marketing is about you putting your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience to the service of those around you. You're becoming known as someone who gives all the time. Yeah, I think that that's a great perspective. Now, in one of your podcast episodes recently that I had listened to, you had discussed using speaking as a networking opportunity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you, how can you do that? That was, that was my mom turning the tables on me. Usually yes. I get to interview her. <laughs> she was interviewing me this time. Mm -hmm. so, well, speaking in, in some ways it's a, it's a content marketing tool. So you're getting up in front of a group of people and providing the knowledge you have, you're getting known as sort of an industry uh, uh, um, thought leader. So that's one aspect of it. But also, it's an opportunity to be in front of a whole bunch of the people that you want to be in front of. And it's funny, when you are the person who's the expert, they like to come up and talk to you. They want to have the opportunity to hear what your thoughts are. And you can find ways to be of service in return. And quite often, that means that that networking kind of takes a jump forward. Uh, they feel like they know you so much better because they've gotten to see you, especially if you speak well and you speak of personal stories. Mm -hmm. uh, 
if you just stand, stand up there and declaim from on high, if you just lecture about the, the um, basics of, you know, whatever the statistics are that you're trying to send out, you're, no one's going to connect with you as a result of that. But if you get up there and tell your personal stories, they will connect with you and they will want to stay connected with you. One thing that you had mentioned in that episode that I thought was fantastic is how to follow up. It is up to us, the individual, to follow up with the other person. You it know, really that is. it's you shouldn't wait for somebody to contact you. And you had a method that you use sometimes um, at the end of your speech. Do you I, mind? I do. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> love I'm, that. I'm it was giving brilliant. Away all my secrets here. <laughs> but yeah, hey, well, it's I public mean, if, knowledge if, if, now. <laughs> if, if, if you, I mean, if you think about it, speaking as a as a networking opportunity, it's it's very similar to if you're networking at you know the chamber. If you're you're chatting with someone at lunch, if you assume that they are going to follow up with you afterward, it's probably not going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe one percent of the time that might happen. Uh, the same thing happens in speaking. If you just stand up there and speak and then put your name and, and your contact information up on the on the slide, probably no one is. In fact, I would say that you know, the, the, the chances are, are vanishingly small that anyone's going to follow up with you. So, yeah, I came up with this this tool and I, I actually learned it from uh, my friend and sales mentor, uh, Joe Marr. He uh, taught me about this uh, mechanism at the end and I modified it a little bit. So I just say, OK, I, I have a drawing for one of my books. On the back of your business card, write the letters R S T. That's R S T. Uh, if you would like to receive this free audio program that I have and uh, have a, a registration for our next free or for our next uh, training program, circle the R to re to receive that gift. If you belong to a group who brings in outside speakers and you think that my message of connection would resonate with them, circle S for the possible speaking opportunity. And then finally, I know that no matter how many times I get to be in front of you, or excuse me, no matter how long I get to speak in front of you, one time is not going to be enough to transform your lives with regards to networking. So I created a program called the 52 Connection Tips. If you'd like to receive that free of charge, circle T for the 52 tips. And once a week, you'll get an audio program about a minute and a half long about good networking. If you would like to circle more than one, feel free. If you don't ever want to see me or hear from me again, circle nothing and you can still win. <laughs> so then we collect the cards and uh, they, they have essentially chosen how I get to follow up with them and how I get to stay connected with them. I think that's fantastic because in content marketing wise and, and building a, a consulting or coaching business, emails are so important to stay in contact with folks and to you know, have them on your contact list so that you can follow up with them. And that is a piece of permission marketing right there. And yes. it's a fantastic, I just thought it was brilliant and I, I appreciate you sharing it. Oh, um, my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> I, I stole it from someone else. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it is fantastic. And that, uh, you know, how they have these business fairs or these events and the public can go through and then they have uh like fish fish jars that you put in the, oh, like a business expo the, type thing yeah the business expo you put in your business card you might win something a free massage or something whatever that business is doing and for more times than not the person or the company that collects those business cards do not do anything with those cards. They don't follow up at all. A simple thank you for my stopping at my booth. Yeah. And sure, they might have just wanted the free thing, but it's an opportunity that from a, a big glass jar of business cards that a few of them you can make a better connection with and may turn into business. And they look at it as, well, they should buy it you know, buy from me automatically, but it, it really is up to us to, to start building that relationship. It's, it's very rare that those situations, those expos that you are sell anything there, exactly. the whole, the whole point of it. I mean, the very point of it is to, to initiate those contacts with a potential new market. Um, but you have to understand that all that is, is an initiation. It's not a, it's not, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not putting the card in so that they can immediately buy from you. In fact, 
we have to even be a little careful about, you know, whether that's permission to, mm -hmm. you know, reach out to them again or not. It's, it's, it's literally, they're putting it in for a raffle and if they get something put on your mailing list, uh, you know, it may not make them entirely comfortable. In fact, there's been a, there's been some commentary from the National Speakers Association. They just recently had their national uh, conference that, you know, how did I get put on these three mailing lists? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is, it is a, a sticky situation, but a simple thank you for stopping by my table. Can I put you on my mailing list? Exactly. You know, and, and getting that formal uh, permission, not all companies do that. It's kind of disappointing <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that they don't and, and get that permission or have some sort of disclaimer. Well, uh, I would argue, even if you're going to do that, um, not only can I put you on the mailing list, Hey, I've got this newsletter that comes out with regularly with this information that could be helpful to you. Would, mm -hmm. would you like to receive it? It's, I mean, not just can I, because if it, the, the, the idea of, can I put you on my mailing list? That's for me. Right. That's not for you. Yeah. Um, and, and really for good networking, for good business, it's got to be about that other person. It's got to be about your networking contact. It's got to be about your prospect because otherwise I, I don't see how we're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. With your line of work and you're working with different clients to, to get them out of their reluctancy of networking, what, what is their biggest struggle? What, what do they come to you for? And I don't know if the right word is complaining about, but what do they recognize about themselves? And how do you, there's a, there's a variety them? of things that people are, are challenged by with networking. I think, uh, initially, it's it just a, a feeling of complete discomfort at this process. It's very, I mean, if you think about it, networking, uh, going to the chamber lunch, it's, it's very artificial. You know, they're, they might have the, you know, okay, well, do your business card exchange. That's not, that's not normal behavior. We don't do that in, in our day-to-day -day lives. So how do we feel comfortable going and doing that? And for a lot of us, especially those of us who are introverts, and I am one of them, uh, mm -hmm. walking into a networking event, being surrounded by all these people who are already chitter chattering and having a great time that can feel like that first junior high school dance, you know, where you stood in the corner and everybody else, all the beautiful people were out there having a good time. It's, it's a really uncomfortable thing. And so the, what I try to help people do right away is get out of that mindset, first of all, because if you're in the mindset of, of, uh, you know, well, stranger danger, for lack of better words, mm -hmm. um, you are not going to be happy or successful at networking. And so what I tell people is, first of all, try to push that aside, be aware that you've got it back there, but just try and push it aside. Now, next time you walk into a room, pretend you are the host of the party, pretend that all these people are your guests and it's your responsibility to make them comfortable. Well, now it's no longer a focus on me. It's a focus on them. Now, when I walk up, it's, you know, hey, how are you doing? I can start being curious about them, being fascinated, being asking good questions, getting them to talk, because really I need to know, you know, do, do I want to continue this conversation beyond this five minutes or do, does this make sense that for us to, to have a, a longer conversation later? But the whole goal is stop being inside yourself. Stop worrying about what you are going to say worry about what you're going to ask and how you're going to make that other person comfortable. That is such great advice. Cause I too, am an introvert and I find myself being the wallflower <laughs> <laughs> and you know, large groups, just, just like if you, if you chunk it down and maybe see a smaller subgroup, it's not so intimidating. I, I always tell people look for the smallest group possible and the smallest group possible is one. Look for the other wallflower sitting off to the side, go and rescue them. Because guess what? They could be really good people to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was chatting with uh, an executive from Kellogg one time and she told me that she, she looks for those, those wallflowers. And so she sat down next to him one time, uh, one gentleman, and he turned out to be the president of the local bank. He just was uncomfortable going out and talking to people. I mean, who wouldn't like to have the president of the local bank in their network? And not only that, but grateful to them. Mm -hmm. for rescuing them. Uh, my husband and I travel quite a bit and I consider just every event that we go to, it may not be a business event. He's a musician too. So we go to different venues. All that is opportunity to network when it boils right down to it. But networking to me is like making new friends. It's making friends on purpose. Mm-hmm. 
That's all it is. I, I've got a, a friend of mine. She was a basketball player in college. And so she goes and does, does pickup games at the local rec center. And she gets some of her best business from that. You know, it's, it's anytime you're around other people, that's a networking opportunity. It's really cool how in the most unlikely places you can find the best connections. You just never know. And that's why I, I let people know that it's, it's no matter where you are, it is a networking opportunity, not a sales opportunity. It's an opportunity mm-hmm. for you to connect, to make friends, to make connections and who knows where it could go from there. You got burnt out on doing the programming. Yes. And now you're teaching folks how you, how you grew your business through networking. Mm-hmm. What has been your biggest reward through doing this? You know, it was, uh, it was a couple of years ago. Now I was at a conference uh, put on by Sean DePeron. It was about how to become a media master. Mm-hmm. And uh, as part of it, I got to stand up in front of everybody and say my name and you know what I did. Uh, During the break that followed, a young woman came up to me and she said, I saw you speak two years ago at the, I don't remember which chamber it was I spoke at, but she said, because of that talk, it completely changed my life. And I started a new business for myself and I have been successful because of what you taught. Wow. You know, when someone comes up to you and you, because sometimes when you're speaking or when you're training especially when you're speaking, you know, people hear you speak and then they go away and you don't know whether you had any, any, any uh, transformation on their lives. But when someone comes back to you like that, and I've received a few of those over the years, it's just amazing to realize that, yes, I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. I love that. I got goosebumps when you said that. That is so awesome. (laughs) I am a speaker and storyteller. So, (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what you're doing. (laughs) I would love for you to share maybe your favorite resource or book that has really helped made a difference for you professionally. Oh, gosh. Uh, (laughs) You know, it's funny because I feel like I'm constantly consuming new ideas on how Mm -hmm. to be successful. But I'm going to, you know, I'm glad you said a resource because uh, while I've read a lot of books, the resource that has been most valuable to me is joining my association, the National Speakers Association. Mm -hmm. Being a part of that, being surrounded by people who really understand what I'm going through and the challenges I'm facing. And not only that, but NSA is a wonderful place where people are, they share their secret sauce with the people sitting next to them. I mean, you always get a lot of information from the guy speaking in front of the room, but you get almost as much from the people who are sitting right next to you. Um, and being a part of that culture, being a part of that uh, family really is, is an amazing, has been an amazing resource to help me build my business. Uh, I honestly would not be where I am today with, without them. I learn so much every time I, I meet with them or meet with members that I've met through there. Uh, I've had accountability partners from there because mm-hmm. they understand the challenges I'm going through and can actually they ask the questions I need to be asking myself. Um, so yeah, I would say that, that joining the NSA, um, and I would recommend that to almost anybody, is find your, find your people who really understand you because they are living in your world. Because, I mean, let's face it, when, you, when I, I don't know if you experience this, but sometimes when I try and tell my family and friends about what I do, they kind of Give me that cocked dog head look that like, huh, (laughs) you get paid to speak in front of me. I don't get, you know, but, but actually being around people who've, who've done the road warrior thing, who've been out on, on the, you know, flying airplanes all over the world, getting, you know, getting delays, getting all that stuff, they understand it. And so being around them, it helps me to feel, in fact, we just say when new people come to, to our meetings, welcome home. Nice. Nice. I, I totally understand. It seems like the people closest to us, our family, our friends, they just don't get us in the way that we need to, to, to prosper in our business, because it's like, you do that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand what those words mean put Uh together. (laughs) So yeah, that sounds like English, but they don't make the words don't make sense in a sentence. (laughs) No, No, I know this, uh, of you that you have a book called hello, and a handshake. And yes. that's available on Amazon. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to have that link in the show notes, but you also are opening up registration for a cool new program. Can you tell us about that? Right. This is our 10 week course. Uh, It's called uh, a referral pursuit. It's sort of an advanced networking. uh, So we're not talking about how do you walk up and shake hands with people. We're talking about how do you develop your network so that you can get the uh, bottom line results that you want out of it? And it's everything from what groups are you, should you be belonging to, uh, to what message are you conveying to those groups and, and in such a way that people want to keep talking about you and sharing your information with their friends. Nice. Now, how does one get on like a, a waiting list or registration for that? Oh, well, we'll be opening up registration and uh, the it's on connectnation.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-X-T mm-hmm. nation.com. The information will be right there. You can, they can sign up right on that web, website. Excellent. How can people stay in contact with you, Greg, and connect with well, you? <laughs> uh, they can connect with me at gpeters at thereluctantnetworker.com. Uh, they can also go to my website and that same URL. Uh, and if they would like to sign up for the 52 connection tips, I'm more than willing to help them out with that. It's just 52 connection tips.com. Awesome. Well, and I'd like to add that if you haven't subscribed to third generation networking podcast, you better because it's, it's really <laughs> good. You. I really enjoy it. Thanks again, Greg, for being here with me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for bringing me in. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I encourage you to check out the show notes for a list of all of Greg's resources. That includes his website, his social links, his book, but more importantly, check out connectsnation.com referral-pursuit for more about his upcoming course. And of course, check out the third generation networking podcast. Hey guys, do you ever struggle with publishing consistent content? I know, I know, I get it. I know all too well the struggle. And sometimes we make things way too complicated for ourselves. And sometimes we just have to get over ourselves. We all know that consistency builds trust. We have to publish consistently in the online world. That's just what we have to do. But somehow getting on that consistency train can be so hard. You got to find the time. You got to think of what to say. And believe me, I feel your pain. And you don't need a complicated plan to get consistent. You got to work that consistency muscle by using a super simple content plan. And that will give you a big win that you can build upon. Now, I have a free resource to help you. Go over to ScrivenerSolutions.com forward slash checklist to download the super simple strategy to jumpstart consistent content creation checklist. Yes, yes, it's a long, long name, but all you have to remember is ScrivenerSolutions.com forward checklist, and you can get that instant download. Get started on the right foot and make the commitment to consistency. Other things will follow, but consistency really does matter. Start super simple and download the checklist at ScrivenerSolutions.com forward slash checklist. Well, thanks for listening. Until next time, have a fantastic week.